Roger Tulsis is a Los Angeles private investigator that specializes in electronic countermeasures. In the past 30 years, he has swept, listen to this now, more than 2,500 locations for bugs and wiretaps. He has worked for millionaires, gangsters, hmm, who would they be? Movie stars, superstar athletes, cult leaders, politicians, doctors, lawyers, real estate moguls, psychics. UFO contactees, gamblers, casinos, sport betting operations, boiler room operators, smugglers, union leaders, aircraft builders, soldiers of fortune, madams, cult deprogrammers, diplomats, arms dealers, name a few. In recent years, his business has included helping victims of electronic harassment. Electronic harassment takes place if someone uses any electronic device to aid them in invading your person or property for the purpose of gathering information illegally or for the purpose of causing physical harm to you. Mr. Tulsis uses more than $100,000 of high-tech equipment to try to identify the sources of electronic harassment. Anyway, uh, it's nice to be here. We've got some interesting developments that have happened, and that's uh, this screen that we've got up here of this wave. One of the machinery, uh, piece of machinery that I'm operating in on uh, the table in there is a weapons development spectrum analyzer. And what, the, what it's used for, it's about a $60,000 machine that was developed, developed by Tektronix. And it, uh, what it does is it uh, enables uh, the aerospace and military to develop weapons grade electronic attack systems. And one of the things that it does is that when you have a weapons, electronic weapon attack, this machine locks onto it and, they, and captures that wave. Uh, the application is that if, if, we're fl if we're flying a jet or some kind of military mission and we get ground radar hitting the aircraft this kind of machinery will then assess the radar and then uh, select a countermeasure to fire back to the ground so the, the individual looking on the radar set will see 15 or 20 blips instead of the one aircraft that we're in. So the application on this machine is that it was uh, for making electronic warfare uh, 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 aggressive equipment and also defensive equipment. Now what we're looking at here and the development that's taken place, and I've seen this before, is that yesterday some government entity was taking a satellite and, and uh, sending down brain interfering signals. In other words, the whole hotel area, both this area and the other side, was saturated. And what this machine did is it captured that attack wave. The way, uh, I turned the machine on about 8.30 in the morning and it was there. Now for the past five days I've been in Sunnyvale doing an assignment over there and this wave was not present the whole five days that I did analysis of the electromagnetic spectrum over there. And so this kind of wave would have the effect to make people nauseated, headaches, uh, you will feel lethargic, you would feel anxiety. You would uh, not be in a very good mood. You'd be edgy. You would um, your your body would be telling you it's time to go somewhere else because this place doesn't feel good. Now this morning, when we turn the system back on again and make another analysis, that wave is is gone. So either the satellite that they had in position to 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 uh, expose us to this has moved, or they decided that they just wanted to give us a one solid day dose of it. It did shut down. Uh, last night just before the uh, banquet and so we we were all we had a good solid eight ten hours of exposure to this thing now I don't know how many people have been here both days that noticed that today they're feeling a whole lot better than they did yesterday and I've talked to quite a few people uh, and asked them whether they feel better and whether they felt anything yesterday and I've, there's been quite a few people that have said that they're feeling a whole lot better today than yesterday your, uh, how many people feel better today than yesterday? Quite a few. Yeah, see? So this stuff is, is the real deal, and the interesting thing about a convention like this is that they're concerned enough about us talking about these matters and all the other related subject matters that uh, your First Amendment rights are in position, but that doesn't mean they're not going to send some kind of attack wave down there to try to discourage the media, and that's what happened. 
I'm going to go ahead and animate this uh, thing so you can see what the actual thing looks like. This is a video that we, we, we took of the uh, attack wave in and of itself. And what's going to happen when I initiate it here is you'll get to see exactly how this thing works when you see it real time. It's a frequency hopping wave. And you see how it's jumping all over the spectrum. It's going back and forth. These are, are short videos, but uh, this gives you the, the dynamics of what happens with this thing. And these waves are pulsed microwaves, so they're, they're not only just covering one area, they're sweeping back and forth, and they are causing interference of the brain because the brain is basically also a computer that uses synapse firings to, for all your thoughts and body control. I'm going to run this one one more time, and I'm going to show you a, diff a different view of it because I changed the uh, settings on the, uh, on the uh, machine in terms of trying to make further analysis. This one is the, is the most real-time analysis, and that's why the wave looks like it's going e even faster. The next one I'll show you, this machine has different kind of uh, capabilities to make analysis, and so this is not my computer here, so I'm going to be a little slow on it. Let's close that out. Uh, it is 1.7 gig, almost 2 gigahertz. The numbers that are on the bottom left right here is the band center, this 1.775 gigahertz. Now, in this case, I'm using what's known as a marker, and that's going to be this little blip right here you see. Once I animate it, what the blip does, this is what's known as sig track, so it's going to jump around, even though the actual wave that they fired at us is jumping around. The SIG track is going to follow it, and you can see that here, that little V that's on the top. And what that does is it, it will moves with the signal as the signal jumps, and as a consequence, you can see up in the top up here, we're getting a chance to look at the actual power levels. The number that's, that's rotating in the, in the upper right corner says minus 50, 50, 40. It's, what it's doing is, is summating those different power levels that are being fired at. Now, the actual level of this thing, it, this, in terms of its power right now, or uh, when we captured it, it's running about two times the power of an FM radio station. Now, if you think about an FM radio station, normally they're 35, but they can be anywhere from 35 million watts to somewhere in the range of uh, 50, 50 megawatts. So for a signal to come up to these levels where you're roughly twice the, your, your ambient FM station means that we're dealing with a fair amount of power coming out of the sky. The, uh, get this thing to run one more time and then we'll move on to the last one. The uh, numbers in the top left is the actual frequency that it's hopping to. It's 1.771, 776. So this is what was being radiated down on all of us from above yesterday all day long. And now that I've told you about it, you can maybe think back also on maybe something and some things you were feeling yesterday that just weren't quite right. And we'll be, uh, because we are archiving this attack, and you know, it's interesting, you don't often get a chance to capture these attacks. Usually they're not so brazen that, uh, that they're going to want you to see exactly what kind of technology they're using on, it, on you. So I've only had maybe 10 attacks or so that I've been able to document like this. One of the other ones was the uh, mind control meeting up in, um, in Davis, which was a few years ago with Mary Ann Stratton. I was running machinery up there also, and then we got the same kind of similar kind of attack, and everybody was feeling bad. That particular meeting was in a church that was out in the, in the uh, farm area, a little bit south of Davis. So I went out there with my binoculars to see if I could see any vans or any kind of cell towers or any kind of other sources that could have caused that wave, but uh, there was nothing around. It was, once again, coming straight out of a satellite. And in, uh, in my information here, we'll have a look at what some of those satellites look like as we move towards some of the other systems. But this is a really a special thing to be able to capture one of these things. Now, here's the uh, last animation on, on, uh, on this thing. And what I did on this one is I made the, ban the bandwidth wider so we're able to see it jump over a wider range. It doesn't stay at one frequency, and that's one of the reasons that it's so uh, efficient at causing uh, brain interference is because, you know, it's not just going to resonate one particular speed and one particular frequency. It's moving and jumping. And the overall motion in and of itself has a frequency to it. So this is, this is the real deal 
satellite type electromagnetic brain interference type of uh, situation. And if you want to see anything further on it, the actual machine that I captured it on is running in the other room on the table. And also we have these quick time videos, that, uh, the, the video presentations themselves uh, over in the other room as well. So, okay, that's the big news. You've gotten, you got hit directly. If you've been here yesterday and today, you've had the first first-hand exposure to what some of these things can do. And of course, what the intent is on developing these weapons is that, you know, we're not going to shoot people with metal bullets anymore. The whole idea is to be able to go to the battlefield and turn on weapons of, the, of this nature and jam people's ability to oppose you just because you can cause their thinking and their bodies to be so sick and so overwhelmed and so confused that they will no longer be able to fight. And the, and the nice thing about that is that you don't have to blow up the cities, you don't have to blow up the bridges, you don't have to blow up the infrastructure like we, we did in Iraq and then have to go spend billions of dollars to fix it. You just jam the people that you want to jam and that's the outcome. Okay, so let me move on. You know, I've, I've done about uh, eight or seven or eight Coast to Coast shows and I'm, hopefully you've heard some of them. And uh, you can go ahead and switch the video over anytime you're ready. And what, uh, what I'm able to talk about here is a little bit more flexible than I've been able to talk on the, um, on the Coast to Coast show. Now, George said last night that, uh, that Coast to Coast is pretty free about allowing you to speak about things. But I have to tell you and be honest with you that I did a Coast to Coast show, and it was probably two or three back. And before I, and it was during the Bush administration. And before I was allowed on the air, I was told that do not send, say anything against George Bush personally. They said uh, fine to, to uh, talk about the policies and any of the, uh, the uh, things that they have done, uh, you know, in terms of the, the uh, war and the other, um, other travesties that they did relating to our, our civil rights. But they, you know, they said to me, just don't uh, say anything personal about George Bush. So, you know, there was fear in their hearts. And of course, uh, I did a, a radio show with Art Bell where we spent a good two hours butting heads about privacy. And uh, he was defending the government. And uh, I'm going to talk a, a little bit about the details of that show. I don't know if, if you were able to hear that show, but it was, I had a lot of people email me and said, boy, who got to Art Bell that he's out there defending uh, the, the abuse of the First Amendment and the Fourth Amendment and the Sixth Amendment? So we'll, we'll talk about that. Anyway, be, that we're here, I have a little more flexibility to talk a little more politico. And, you know, after listening to the, some of the other speakers, I'd like to make a couple of comments because uh, basically I've stud, studied sovereignty and law for, for six years. And I've, uh, I've sued the government personally uh, three times. I've filed habeas corpuses. I've got a larger constitutional law library in my home than they've got in Riverside County, California. Now, thank you very much. And the really good news is, is that you can go on eBay and you can type in constitutional law book, law books, and you will have access to buying sixty hundred dollar law books for fifteen dollars, and you can do it yourself. It took me a lot of years to get the particular books I wanted, but that's how easy it is. These kids that study law for a while, they turn in these uh, educational books, and uh, um, you really can 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 get some terrific information that you can have on hand. However, let me just move back a little bit. Now, before George Bush got into office, we all know that Bush Sr. made this speech about the New World Order. And uh, it was an eye-opener for everybody because basically what he said, you know, is that we're just going to let the corporations run the world and we're all going to be happy ever after. And then when George Jr. got in, I wish I could be there to see it, but here's what I, the way I think the conversation went. George Sr. said to George Jr., you've got three objective, uh, objectives. I want you to dismantle, disrupt the United States military. I want you to dismantle and disrupt the United States Constitution. I want you to dismantle and disrupt the United States economy. Well, everybody thinks this kid's an idiot, but guess what? Mission accomplished in eight years. Mission accomplished. He's got all three objectives. He wore our military out on a, on a war that was unnecessary. 
billions and billions of dollars spent, and that isn't even the, the cost of human life, and not only our kids fighting over there, but all the people that they massacred uh, in that location as well. And none of it connected to 9-11. And then, of course, they let the, uh, they let the, uh, the uh, Wall Street people run free, didn't do anything, as the lecturer uh, the other morning was talking about. They did nothing to allow uh, on these derivatives. They let it all go crazy.